tonight. Do we know who Liverpool's next manager will be? We'll talk to the man responsible, responsible for the new Robbie Fowler mural at Anfield and have a look at the brand new Jurgen Klopp mural. And what's it like to watch the match from the new Anfield Road stand? John Pearman's watched the game from there. His verdict is coming up. Welcome to Red All Over YouTube, which is the live video version of this. Red All Over the Land, the Liverpool fanzine. It's now in its 28th season, making it the longest running and only surviving Liverpool fanzine. The editor-in-chief is John Pearman. Good evening, John. Good evening, you're all right? You having a good time? Um, not too bad. I actually went for a walk this afternoon and nearly got blowed away. But, um, yeah, you know, talk about blowing in the wind. This was something else. Well, it's it good that you can actually can actually go out there and have a walk because this YouTube show is making you more famous, isn't it? People are coming up to you now. Well, I mean, I've been approached by people now from Hong Kong, America, uh, Singapore, Japan. Yes, yeah, so it, it, people must be watching it somewhere. OK, um, and, and uh, this yeah, all so happens it, at the match, we should say. It's not happened outside. Oh, yeah, yeah, they don't meet me in the street. Okay. That's only happened, as, as we said once before, previously, Tesco. Yeah. Right, OK. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And But when you've been in the ground, you mentioned to me, I think it was last week, that we're becoming even more international now. You were, you were, There were fans sat around you from all over the world last time. Yeah, there was me and a guy from uh, Tamworth, and um, we felt out of it because the uh, the guy next to me was from Liechtenstein. He was a bit of a strange bod. Behind us were all people from all over Europe. Uh, in front, there were people from Lebanon, and there was somebody holding up a flag that uh, shouldn't have been in there um, due to, well, what, that's what they say. Although I actually got stopped going in... Um, against uh, Sheffield United because I got a bottle of water with me and the woman on the gate said, you can't bring that in. I says, I always bring a bottle of water in. She said, you can't bring that in. So I just said, okay, okay, walked away and went through another turnstile with it. Right, okay, yeah, that's the way to do it, yeah. Well, uh, I don't know, I doubt, I mean, we don't talk about them very much, but I doubt Everton have, you know, that kind of fan base from all over the world, you know, and people from Hong Kong and all that coming to see. Because you were saying you were talking to the, the fellow next year. At Goodison Park, this is how you talk to the fellow next year. It isn't very good, is it? Anyway, let's just... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, all right. How are fanzine sales, John? The last two uh, issues, issue 300 and 301, have sold out. 302 comes out on Thursday. Yeah. And uh, then the final one of the season, which will be out, um, is expected to be out when we play uh, Tottenham. Uh, that is going to be a Jurgen Klopp special. It's going to be in full colour. Um, so we'll have full colour pictures of the murals. Unfortunately, we can't do that in the uh, current issue, which is obviously black and white. Mm -hmm. um, the, the covers, though, are still colour, though. Yeah. Covers, yeah, yeah. yeah, but yeah. The, uh, the, the things inside, are, as you know, are all black and white. But... The, four, the next issue, the issue 300 will, 303, will be a full colour Jurgen Klopp special. Wow, so what's 302? What's this one there? What's that one? That one is 302, yeah. Yeah, so this, this is the one, when will this one be out? Thursday. That one's out Thursday, and then 303 is the, the full colour end of season spectacular. Yeah. Yeah, you should put out an annual as well, John. Yeah, if I found time to uh, read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the news would be pretty old as well, the way the way things change. Yeah. The new Anfield Road stand, which game was that that you watched from there? Uh, Brighton, and uh, I was actually in a perfect seat right behind the goal, but about halfway up the stand, and um, it was actually incredible. The, the view was fantastic. I don't know... Um, uh, if Mark's ever been up to Newcastle to watch a game of football. But when you're at Newcastle, you're so far back. But this one seems to, you're not so far back. And uh, it's um, it was quite incredible. And the noise was, was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. There were two girls sat behind me and they never shut up. It's like being at home, actually. Um, <laughs> they, 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 they never shut up the whole game. And they knew all the songs. And at the end of the match, 
George decided it was worth um, one kiss, the song that does the rounds now for at Liverpool, and they joined in that. And they knew every word of that. I don't I only know the words one kiss. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Yeah, I suppose because that's the problem when you get near the back of the cop. Because the cop isn't that steep, you are a long way from the pitch by then. But the Anfield Road stand is still quite steep, isn't it? It is. It, it's it's very good. It's been well thought out. I I thought the um I thought the view was perfect. It really yeah. far far better than the old Anfield Road stand when you, you sometimes thought you were looking through a post box at a football match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is oh, well, this is really good. That's good to know. All right. Well, we, before we bring on our guest, I, I want to show you some of his work, some of his recent work, which is the new Robbie Fowler mural. Have you seen it in real life yet, John? Oh, yes. I was I actually spoke to Mark, um, I think it was two days before it was officially unveiled. Shall we use that word? Um, Ex exactly where working. is it? Because it's just off Anfield Road, isn't it? Near Hotel Anfield. Anfield Road. Just you walk out of, um, if you walk out the stadium and turn left, it's about less than 50 yards down there on, on your left. Or if you're coming up to the Anfield Road, it's obviously on the right. It's it, it, it's something so spectacular. But I'll, I'll say more after you've shown your, your clip. Okay. This is a, this is a clip a shortened version of a great YouTube video that This Is Anfield have put up. Theirs is much longer with a longer interview with Robbie and interviews um, with Mark. But this, this gives you a flavour of what it's all about. Fowler, whose goals were heaven, hallowed be thy name. When you did come, many games were won, and our ground felt like heaven. Give us this day our daily red, and forgive away trespassers as we forgive those who play against us. For Anfield is our kingdom, our power and our glory, for ever and ever. Our Robbie. Uh, you, you know what, I, I'm, I mean, I don't really know what to say. I, I mean, I walked over and I genuinely was touched. I mean, it, it's not only is it brilliant, but it, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, I, th I think already it's going to be like an iconic mural, and uh, I mean, I can't thank Mark and everyone at Mural Walls for doing it, and um, I mean, a real, a real humbling experience. Uh, and you know, I did say before, you know, I've, I've I lost my dad a while ago now, and I wish he was here to see this because this is a, a genuinely special. It really is. So thanks to This Is Anfield for putting that up. It's a much longer, if you want to check out the longer version of that, check it out. This Is Anfield, uh, Robbie Fowler with the mural. So Mark Silver, how are you? Welcome to Red All Over YouTube. Hi, Graham. How you doing? You right, John? Hiya. Yeah. So I'm doing well. Tell us about, now, mural walls. Tell us about the business that, that does the murals. Tell us all about Because the murals, to me, around L4, it's like the, the, that part of the city's been tattooed. <laughs> but, you know, that, that, that's a really good way of saying it. A great analogy because that's how I sort of talk about them. It's a bit like getting a tattoo. Um, yeah. if you've had one or two, you kind of just get carried away and just keep going. So you might as well. Uh, you just get more and more excited. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how I look at it. The, the way that the business started uh, officially back in 2019, at the very end of 2019, but it was about three, four years before that when I kind of had this moment. Um, so I've always been creative. I've been involved in art and design and I've had a publishing company over in Germany with National Geographic for many years. And um, we was actually decorating my house at home. Uh, I live in Essex. Uh, I'm not based in Liverpool, I'm, I'm in Essex. And uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to de decorate my son's bedroom as the room that I would have wanted when I was a kid. I didn't really care what he wanted. I wanted mine. So uh, a lot of Liverpool fans that know about murals know that, that me and not all the team, are, I'm a West Ham fan. And I had a collection of shirts over the years that was just getting bigger and bigger. And I felt it's such a shame not to display these on a wall. So I wanted to put them on his wall and I wanted to show them off. So I was thinking of all different ways of doing it, putting perspex in front of it. But then I felt, you know, you can't change them. Also, they're going to fade in the sunlight. And I came up with this idea of making his bedroom almost into like the changing rooms. So when you walk in, you feel like you're in the changing rooms, but there wasn't enough room 
to put a real bench and everything like that. So I created this idea where we painted it onto the wall in a 3D effect. So you've got the bench, you've got everything hanging off of it. And what I done was rather than uh, paint the shirts on the bench, I actually drilled the pegs into the wall and then we could hang the shirts up and it meant that we could actually change the shirts. So every week you can have a new look bedroom. Uh, if you've got a, a shirt of a player up there who you adore and then he does the dirty on you, you can get rid of it and bring in a new one. And uh, that, that was my concept. It was street art in your home and, and <clears throat> was the first thing we wanted to start with. And I, I got myself a meeting with West Ham and the licensing team and the retail team and they thought it was incredible and their reaction gave me the inspiration to really push it and they said do you want us to introduce you to other clubs and i said well yeah if you don't mind and they said well let me introduce you to liverpool because if you get in at liverpool then you don't have to do anything else because everyone will follow you <laughs> and um lo and behold we got an in introduction to liverpool and the reaction i got from the license manager at the time was exactly the same it was wow let's do this and um we we set it up the plan was that we were going to kind of promote it by kind of giving one away every few months to a child that needed a bit of support, whether he's being bullied at school or through ill health and stuff like that. And that's how we launched. We launched together with LFC TV and we done a makeover for a couple of kids uh, bedroom. Rian Brewster, who at the time was a friend, friend of uh, mine. I knew him through somebody else and I got him to come down and the kids love Rian Brewster. He was just breaking into the team. And we got him to dress up as one of our artists and uh, we painted the bedroom and everything and the kids loved it. It went really viral. This was at December 2019. Um, and then within three months, we went into lockdown because of COVID. And uh, that was pretty much where I would say Mural Walls was born because although the bedroom side of things and street art in your home was interesting, what we done then was we knew Liverpool were gonna win the league. They were so far ahead. And uh, I thought that let me get in touch with one of the fan groups. I got in touch with Red Men TV um, with Chris and Paul over there and just said, look, you know, I've seen the Trent mural that's up there. We can do something like that. Are you interested? And he said, well, I'm a bit nervous because I don't want to tempt fate. And I said, look, I can tell you as an outsider, you're going to win it. As long as the football restarts, you're going to win it. So they said, all right, well, let, let's talk about it. Let's plan it. And I literally went door knocking around Anfield every gable end I knocked on the door and I got a lot of people that didn't know um, who their landlord was. I got a lot of people that were Everton fans and then I got uh, a few people that were Liverpool fans and said, yes, please. And were fighting over it essentially. <laughs> and we, cho we chose this house, which was opposite Trent and uh, Tom who owns the house has become a very good friend of mine and an advocate for, for everything we do. And um, we, uh, we planned it. So the night that Liverpool lifted the trophy, we was out on the scissor lift, me and the team uh, were all prepared for it. The club's photographer sent through the picture of Jordan lifting up the picture, which I must say, looking back at it now was was a, a very dark and, and difficult picture because it was a nighttime image. Um, but we, we used it, we worked through the night and we had the mural done the next day. Uh, Henderson came down with his dad to have photos taken and signed the wall. Uh, and then about two hours later, I got a call from someone saying it's uh, BBC Sport and uh, we're looking to do something uh, with street art for the introduction for Match of the Day for next season. Would you be interested? And that's where I say we begun, because after that, we, we haven't really done too many bedrooms since then. Uh, <laughs> Steve, Stephen Gerrard's son's bedroom, uh, Leo, we, we did do, um, yeah. but we don't, we don't do too many now um, because... Obviously, you know, it's the exposure that you get on the outside ones. That's the one that's going to get you noticed and that gets you the next lot of work. And now, you know, obviously we're doing a lot around Liverpool, as you know, but other clubs are coming to us and other sports because we've been doing stuff for England rugby at Twickenham and tennis and cricket. And it's taken us all around the world. And even outside of sport, we've been working with movies like Mad Max, Ghostbusters and musicians uh doing stuff with elton john and uh yeah we even this is how random it gets for us we could be doing a mural of robbie fowler at anfield and next week we're in la painting the teletubbies that's pretty <laughs> random. Um, and we love it we wouldn't have it any other way wow what a success story what a great story of success that is from, yeah, and, um, from just... it's covid covid really is it's a success story it's come out of covid because obviously covid was a very very challenging time for a lot of people and still, you know, a lot of people still are struggling with it now. But uh, from a business point of view for myself and Mural Walls, um, it really was the kind of uh, launch pin. 
So when it goes on someone's house, it's th that's their private house. Who pays for it? Everyone's different. Everyone's different. Uh, the football clubs pay for it. The fan groups pay for it. Uh, individual fans. Uh, one of our clients that lives in Wiltshire, who's a big Liverpool fan, um, he got us in to decorate his whole garden to make it look like Anfield, and he had the cop in there. Um, I told him that we were doing a mural of Steven Gerrard, and he, he said to me, um, oh, brilliant, I'd love to come down for that. I said, well, look, I'll let you know when the date is. I'm just trying to get some funding for it. And he said, well, what do you need? I told him, and uh, he said, no worries, transferred it to my bank account. And he was the unspoken hero like he, he's the sponsor of it and he's never asked for anything he's never he, whenever i said can we put your name out there wasn't interested um stevie g done a nice personal message for the for him and his son but other than that there was no recognition at all wow oh they just are incredible and you do you mentioned you did that uh, the one when they won the title you did that overnight is that about the time scale you do on it you do it overnight like everyone's different um, okay. it, it's, it's down to the, the image really and the images and the detail i mean you look at ian rush one which is right next to the stadium and that's probably one of our most powerful and prominent ones that was only two days jürgen klopp uh not the latest one but the jürgen klopp that we done in anfield that's a full color piece that took about four days um, and we only had one of our artists working on that as opposed to a whole team. So every single one's different. We always, we haven't really gone over a week, five days, I'd say is the maximum it's ever taken us. We do have challenges sometimes like the one we've been working on over the last couple of days, the weather's not been on our side. Um, but usually, you know, in Liverpool, the sun comes out for us when we most need it, especially on the Robbie Fowler one. We, we had well, you're dealing with God, aren't you? You're dealing with God himself. So, you know, yeah, there's, absolutely. Uh... he looked after <laughs> us. <laughs> Yeah. How many people are in your team? So we've worked with over 30 artists over the last four and a half years, but we've got a core team of about 10 artists that are on 90% of the jobs that we're working on. And, you know, we keep them very busy. We're fortunate that, you know, we've got a good reputation now and we're keeping ourselves busy doing so many different things. And it's not just the big walls arts that we're doing. We're even creating products on the back of it that um you know for hmv for example interested in the dungeons and dragons artwork that we do and we've got license with and uh, uh monopoly and all these brands transformers that we work with and even uh, for example like the robbie fowler mural on the back of that we're going to create a product range so we've got t-shirts that um come to life because that's one thing that i don't know if they showed it on that video not the one just there but what we installed on that Robbie Fowler mural, it's the first one we've ever done. It's the first one of its kind in the football world, not in street art. But we created a QR code on there, which when you scan it, it brings the mural to life. And um, what happens is there's a halo spinning around Robbie's head. There's the nose strip on his nose that flaps on and off. And there's the ball spinning around. Um, and we've created that now onto the T-shirts that we're going to be bringing out. And the same thing happens. And, and Robbie signed a few prints for us limited edition prints that we're going to be able to sell and that's one of the ways that we've helped fund this mural as well well on the t-shirts when you if you've got anything uh, certainly over the next couple of weeks when we do this color um issue of the fanzine um which i've got plans to to get various ways of uh, putting it out into the um the marketplace if that's the right word obviously okay. we'll sell it at the ground but we could certainly put um, something in, you, you know, the shirts and things like that. Yeah. But, um, Here's a sneak preview, yeah? Very sneak preview. There you go. Right. Oh, well, that you, looks great. QR code mm. there. I think you'd have one of them, Graham, wouldn't you? I'd definitely have one of them. Yeah, I'd wear it on the mm. show. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I mean, to me, what I, I'll i say this, I've, I've walked around, um, not just Anfield, but uh, Liverpool, and you've seen these this artwork, various places, various people. I've seen murals in other cities, not not necessarily football, but yeah. I can honestly say this: I have never seen anything anywhere near as good as the Robbie Fowler one. Nothing, That's really, really kind and really generous to say that. Close. Nothing comes yeah. close. Uh, and I've, I've told him Graham, because Graham hasn't actually seen it yet. He hasn't had the chance to see it. But you are looking at a church window. <laughs> and yeah. that, that is, you, you know, it's so incredible. And uh, it just, you, you know, you can't, whoever walks past that is going to stop. But, you, you know, and people, 
I don't know who's the, the owner of the property, the house, but people are going to be knocking on the doors, you know. And it's, yeah. um, it, 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 it is, and I think what's happened uh, certainly over the last um, three years, or possibly since the COVID, um, murals have become uh, like you could do a tour of the of the Liverpool FC murals and um, yeah, someone cool. should do a walking tour, shouldn't they? Yeah. Well, funny yeah. enough, there's there's a couple of people doing them, and there's a company that approached us that we're we're friendly with called Liverpool Connect that are authorised by the uh, the tourism board of Liverpool. And they I do, they you. do driving tours for people, take them around yeah. all the mules. They know all the history behind great. all of them. I've, they've asked me lots of questions. They're very well educated on it. And it's great. I mean, wherever you, whenever we come down there and we're just in the area or we're starting another mural, it's just fascinating seeing people, whatever time of the day, whatever day of the week coming down and there's not even a match on and they're just standing there taking pictures. And it's one of the reasons why Tom allowed us to do the mural on his house is because he said he, he's, he's fed up with everyone standing on his wall taking photos of Trent. So he said he wants people standing <laughs> on the wall opposite taking pictures of his one. Um, and, and that's where it all started. But I, I appreciate what you say, John, about the mural. And I'm, I'm being modest, but, you know, there's so many amazing artworks that, that our team have done and, and other artists in Liverpool that I think are fantastic as well. Um, but I must say that I was, I was really close to pulling it probably a few days before doing it i was really close um and the reason being is that it it become very stressful um the the owner of the property had some scaffolding up there uh because there was a problem with the roof and uh it was due to come down at the end of january and then i chased it up because i saw it up beginning of february and they were like no it's coming down next week it's fine and then we were meant to go up there on a friday night and it was only in that morning someone messaged me and said, you do know that scaffolding is still up. So obviously I spoke to the owner. He said, oh, yeah, it'll be down tomorrow. And, you know, obviously we're a day behind already. And also the murals that we do, like this is this is very different. One, because we've got the augmented reality where it comes to life. So although I knew that we knew what we were doing, I was nervous because it's the first time we've done it. And also the church window aspect of it. When I first sat down with Robbie, and spoke to him about the mural. We spoke about things that I think would be really cool. The do's and don'ts, because the first thing I always said, thought, well, the first thing I said is like, you know, do we think about that iconic image of Robbie Fowler and the touchline? And the answer is, you can't do that. Oh, that um, one with the sniffing the um Yeah, the, that would have been quite yeah. cool in the augmented reality, but there's reasons <laughs> not to do that. So yeah. we had to kind of look at it. And then I, I said to him, do you want to be involved? And he said, you know what? I trust you, do what you want to do. And I was like, okay, I took that as really positive, but then as it got closer, I was thinking, well, the fans call him God, but does he like that? Does he not <laughs> like it? And I didn't know whether I should maybe ask him more, but I wanted to surprise him. A couple of times he kind of sort of hinted at asking to see the design and, and I just went like, you know, you don't like surprises, do you? Just, just be patient. Um, and because of all these things with the scaffolding, and then I started doubting going, are we gonna, is this gonna be perceived the wrong way? Am I trying to be too clever with the design and the augmented reality? And I, I had a bit of a, a nervous moment a couple of days before, and I was very close to, to putting it, but I, I dusted myself down and went, no, let's do it. Let's take the risk. And boy, am I glad that we did because it's, um, yeah, I'm really proud of that one. No, I'm not surprised. And quite rightly, as I say, I, I look at them all and um, I try to, because people will come up and ask me when I'm selling the fanzine, where's the, um, Mo Muriel, where's the this one, that one? And um, the last home game, which was um, on a Sunday, I I got three or four people, no more, at least half a dozen people just come and said, where's Robbie? They didn't tell, you, you know, I knew what they meant. You, you know, and that was it. Uh, because these these are guys who come to every game and they they want to know where things are. And, you know, you do get, we call them the tourists, and they they'll come and they ask, "Where's uh, where's the fowl and Muriel?" And yeah, so it, it really is. It's amazing. I say, I'm I'm just if I was Robbie Fowler, <laughs> like he said, he, he's um, he's a bit uh, modest in some ways because I thought this was an humble, as he said, but it's just incredible. It really is. It's I, I, I say I'll repeat what I said earlier. It's the best I've ever seen. By a long, long way. I, I do find that really amazing. You know, when you said people say, where's Robbie? 
Um, like when we're doing these murals, obviously there's always rumors going around that, that the person's going to come down the player and stuff like that. I mean, the Bobby Firmino one was the biggest uh, secret <laughs> ever. No one knew about it apart from myself, Liam Benoni, John Colshaw, who was involved in the project. And um, Liam, who's Brazilian, was in touch with um, Bobby's wife and arranged it all. But what had happened is I think his wife had mentioned to one of the security guards at the club just to be careful to bring someone down there. And uh, he turned up with his whole family on a coach. Um, there was probably about 300 people standing at the wall before I got there. I, I just had no idea how they knew. And it was one person in security at Anfield that had mentioned it to one other person. And that's how quickly it spread within an hour. Uh, and, and Bobby was brilliant because he made sure that everyone had a photo, like he'd done a group photo with everyone. So no one felt left out. It was absolutely fantastic. But there's times where we've done stuff and we know that the player's coming down. And you see people just passing randomly and taking photos and they stand there chatting to you and then they're gone. And you're thinking five minutes later, they would have been there and seen them. And, but it's not my position to say that because, you know, you don't want too many people there. Um, but there are times where I feel really sorry for people uh, that they've just missed out on that opportunity. And when you do them, obviously you must design them on a computer. So you do get a, um, a stencil of the of the gable end it's going on and then design it on there. Is that where it starts? Gen generally, I'll take a photo of the side of the house so we know what kind of size and shape we're working to. And then, yeah, I just in Photoshop, I put all the elements together, find the images that I like and bring bits together and add design. Um, I'm not taking the credit on Robbie Fowler. There's an artist that we work with called Luke Gray, who, who, who I gave him the concept and he put it together. He's not even a football fan, but he got it. He got what I was looking at and uh, it all come together really nicely um well how do you turn it, that into the into the game do you have to project on lines or something yeah so there, there's a few different ways that you can then bring that to life on the wall um the most straightforward way is to go at night project the image up draw all the outlines on and then in, in layman terms you color it in uh, that's the <laughs> next process um the other way of doing it is when i was at school we draw a picture used to draw lines up and down make squares and then you would recreate it by doing square by square. Um, and then the, the quickest way of doing that is a thing called a doodle grid, which really does throw people's minds because they look at the wall at the beginning and it's got all different shapes and letters and all different things going on the wall. Um, and all that is, is it's just a junk grid for us. It's a way that we can kind of take a photo of the wall. We then put our design onto our phone and we make it op opaque. So it's transparent and we know that where the head comes around or the top of the ear, it's where that triangle is or where the W is. And that's quite simply how it works. Um, and then the really, really stupidly talented people will just freehand the whole thing without any grids or markups. But that's that's very rare. If you want to get it right, you know, uh, it's always easier to do this kind of thing, especially when you're up against time as well. You know, that's there are a couple of ways of doing it. Andrew Nixie's been in touch because uh, if you're watching this and you want to comment, there's the comment screen, whether you're watching it on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or Twitch or whichever platform you're on, there's, there's the comments thing to, to fill in there if you want to uh, say anything. Andrew Nixie says the detail in the Fowler one is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, actually, Andrew was one of the people that come up and said, I'm going to see, find it. Yeah. All so right. He, well, he was obviously pleased when he did. He was yeah, obviously pleased when he did, John. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. I can't remember. I think it was with his wife, and uh, and the thing about Robbie Fowler is, um, a lot of Liverpool's had a lot of players that have come and gone, uh, and um, you you know the, the they've achieved so much, but Robbie he he actually um, he was just a local lad, and uh, you, you know he he didn't win that many medals. He, he won a few, but um, it was just his whole. The, the whole local hero is amazing. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think, as I say, you, nobody will walk past that that Turk mural and, and, and not stop and look at it. And yeah. you know, I, what I think is great is the, the team coach comes along that road every game and they can see it. Yeah. And you, if that doesn't act as some sort of form of inspiration... <laughs> You, you know, this is what we want. We want to be on that wall or that wall over there, whichever. You, you know, that's something. You know, that's how I view it anyway. That's, but, uh, um, that's the thinking behind the Ian Rush mural. And that's why 
it was really important that we got it where it was, right next to where the players come in. Because I think that for one, it acts as an inspiration for the current players to look at what a legend and you know what if you achieve great things, what can happen to you. Yeah. Um, at the same time, it's also for the opposition, it puts a bit of fear into them to see, you know, what this club is all about. Um, and it's a question we've asked, like we, we do a podcast um, where we've interviewed some of the people that we've painted murals of and, and people like Stephen Gerrard. And you say to them, what does it feel like to have your face painted 25, 30 foot high on a wall next to the stadium you played at? And it, not just humbling, but they say it's the best thing that's ever happened. You know, one of the best things that's ever happened in their life. And for us to, to know that we've done the, that. The bloke who lifted so the European Cup says the mural is the best thing. Yeah, and, and I asked that question. <laughs> and what he said is that the European Cup was, was something he's so proud of, but as a team. Whereas when you got the mural, he said that that's kind of one of the first times that he realised for himself what he had achieved and for his family to appreciate it as an individual. And I, I kind of look at that and I understand that. But for us to know that we've had an impact on the lives of these people that have impacted so many other people's lives, that's a really special thing for us. I, I just think um, you were saying that about Stephen Gerrard and obviously he's another iconic um, Liverpool local um, but I just think that Robbie Fowler's family in years to come will be able to go down there and they'll take their children. You, you, you know, it's just there for forever. And it's hopefully it's there for the rest of my life anyway. And, uh, I just think it's something that's fantastic. Um, you, you, you know, it's just, he, he is a legend and you you know that word gets overused nowadays i mean you look at the when liverpool player the legends game some of the people that gone in i can't even <laughs> don't even know they played for us very often but robbie fowler is a true true legend and that it does injustice that's the um something else you, you know, does injustice i think we always local... sorry sorry mark we, we're always amazed really that because as soon as you start doing one, so we do the Robbie Fowler one, and what you have is, is rather than people going, oh, great, you're doing a Fowler one, you get people going, we haven't done that one yet. Why haven't you done that one? You get a lot of that. But there is certain situations where you look at it and you go, why is there not an Ian Rush mural? Why is there not a Robbie Fowler mural? And you're doing them, you're going, right, we've done it now. But there's, there's Liverpool's got so many great legends that you can just keep going on. And and we try, I always try to make sure that some of the really you know, far back generations of players are there as well. You know, Ian St. John um, is on there as well. And, uh, you know, even Call Callahan and Phil Neal, people like that. These, without these players, you wouldn't have had the rushes. And then, no. you know, leading on to the players of Fowler and even up to now with, with um, Salah and players like that. So I think it's really important and, and also to educate the younger generation that this is what the club's foundations were, were built on. I think it's really cool. Yeah, it really is good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I just find that uh, it, it's something new. And um, I mean, I'll be honest, when it comes to art, I'm, I'm a waste of space. I mean, I couldn't even draw a straight line with a ruler, but um, I just, I just find that this is something that it could inspire. Um, it could inspire kids to to say, "I want to start doing that. I want to get involved in that." You know, the street art and street art's gone from um, graffiti, if you like, to something else now, and it, it's fantastic. What you've done is amazing, and from Liverpool fans' perspective, I could only thank you. It's just incredible. Yeah, it oh, just it's great. really really nice for you to say that. As I said, like you know, we've got a great team. Um, but we also have to rely on the support to make these things happen. And uh, as I said to you, there's a, there's a friend of mine that was a client originally that, that sponsored the Stephen Gerrard one, and he helped finance the Robbie Muir as well. He put some money towards it. And I must thank um, uh, Peter and Hotel Anfield because they really did pull out all the stops, not only like helping us with some finances, but they put us up in the hotel, um, mm -hmm. a lot of the team. Um, and just a lot of the, the donkey work that we didn't want to have to do preparing for it. They were really good. So um, there's a lot of people to thank. There's a guy called Lee who's been an absolute rock for us as well in terms of helping us with these projects. Um, but there, it's it's really about the people that are surrounding us uh, as well. And I've got to give a special mention to a lady, young lady called Courtney Neary who's got a YouTube channel, who's got a massive following at Liverpool. 
and uh, it, we we met her because she was just fascinated watching us do the uh, the Jordan Henderson mural, and stood there for a few days taking pictures. And I saw she's an absolute talent of a photographer, and now she's the official murals photographer and comes on all the jobs and <laughs> and takes great pictures. And she's got all the media calling her up after the jobs um and, and liverpool football club going can we have some photos of it because she's absolutely fantastic i think she even supplied your ones john really yeah well, maybe not <laughs> she should have done but um, no, you know, um i uh I, I basically i go on i just go on websites and you nick them off the internet and steal them, yeah. yeah 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 <laughs> but i mean if these people can you, cut, can you edit this i don't know because <laughs> no we're live <laughs> if this, if this, uh, if this uh, lady wants this is to John's get last prison, podcast, before he goes yeah, to well, we'd love we'd love to be in touch with these people. Um, yeah. You see, we're we're an independent fanzine. We get no, we get very little support from um, anyone. We what we do, we've been going for nearly thirty years, yeah, and um, we're basically on at work on our own. But we try to we try to involve the community. And um, when we do a charity event, it's all for the community. So, you, you know, people get in touch with us, we can work with them. That's what we want to do. And, you know, this um, YouTube show that we do, we started it, we actually started it with a raffle during COVID, didn't we, Graham? <laughs> yeah. And um, it, it's sort of like, now people people enjoy it. It's it's not the Anfield rap, it's not Red Men TV, but it's it's there for enjoyment and um, laid back. We're not serious, we don't take ourselves serious. And uh, but you know, if these people uh, could get in touch with me, then we can work together. Same with your t-shirts design. So we we could get the word out there in the fanzine that these are available. People would snap them up, I'm sure. But it's a case of working with people, working together, and we're now working um, not hand in hand, but reasonably close with the Spirit of Shankly. So and and say Hotel Anfield with. Um, we put on three three events there, so we know I know Peter and uh, and Danny and all that and um, other people that uh, get involved with the events. So that's what we do. The last but, yeah, one was it, Kevin Keegan, and he was brilliant. He was brilliant. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, can, if, I missed that one. Yeah, if we, we had Phil get, Thompson before that. Yeah, it was great. If we can get people to come along and um, speak to us and say you you know. About, about the photography and all that, we'd feature it in the fanzine because the, the fanzine's been going a long, long time. But we need, we always need to fre get fresh people involved, and if these people can get involved, it helps us because if they they've got a million or so followers, then you know we get the word out there. If you only pick up five or six people to subscribe to the fanzine, that's a bonus. Mm. Mark, I've had a couple of suggestions. Anne's been in touch for suggestions for murals you need to do next. Go on, uh, if you've just tuned in, um, Mark Silver is from Muir Walls. They're responsible for so many of the murals around Anfield, including the new Robbie Fowler one and the Klopp one, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Anne says, Ray Kennedy, Peter Beardsley, underrated Liverpool legends next, please. And then she's messaged again and she says, or the 1988 side, the greatest side ever seen in British football. Just okay, a few suggestions. Good, good shout, and I wouldn't rule them out. There's there's so many that you can keep adding to it. Um, we have had a couple of times where people have said about doing multiple people together on one wall, but uh, as you see from the murals, that we it's not that we want to just give the wall to one individual or it's sometimes a couple of people. Uh, when you're working with spray paints and you're getting the details in, we have to go bigger. So sometimes people go, oh, can you just do a little one for me on a canvas or in my garden? And they think it's going to be quicker. The smaller it is, the longer it takes, because the bigger canvas we've got, you can just create more more detail, really, with the spray paints and stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we've had a couple of suggestions, even something like the boot room, when you could have multiple people on it together, which would yeah. be a great shout. But, um, you know, I'd need a huge wall for that because you want to make <laughs> sure that you've got each face at least yeah, six foot yeah. tall, at least six yeah. foot tall to get the detail in it. Yeah. And also, as you go further back as well, the references that you're working with, you're working with grainier photos. So it makes yeah. it even harder. You don't have the luxury of really super sharp image to be able to zoom in and just get all the detail in. So there's, yeah. there's lots of things to look out for when you're creating them. Keegan and Toshak could be a nice twofer. Uh, I don't know. Just an idea. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And it's, it's been mentioned a few times to me. Has it? Definitely. In fact, the, the Jurgen Klopp mule that we've done on the house of a lady called Sue, 
uh, who who also works in the Twelfth Man Pub. Um, she, um, yeah, she she's uh, absolutely brilliant, and I, I, she was. Uh, I can't remember what I was going to say then. I can't remember. I got distracted because I seen the Jurgen Klopp mural popping up. <laughs> I, was, talking I was talking about, about you're talking about uh, Toshak and uh, and Keegan. Maybe she's as, as she's an absolute idea. massive fan of Kevin Keegan, like to the point that she's a stalker for Kevin Keegan. He knows that. <laughs> and uh, she wanted um, she wanted Kevin Keegan. I said, look, we're going to do a Jurgen Klopp one. She went, all right, then, that would do. So we've done the Jurgen Klopp one that, that's on the side of a house that's, you know, gone crazy, especially since, obviously, he's announced that he's leaving the club. Yeah. Um, but we've just completed the one on your screen there that was kind of half done yesterday. We've just completed another one that finished this afternoon. Um, Sky Sports News were down there and Bruce Grobelar was there. Um, helping us spray a little bit on as well. Um, but th this one's at the side of the Phoenix Hotel in Kirkdale. So there's, uh, it's quite well known. We, we've already done a big Beatles mural on the side. Um, but what they've done is they've put this temporary wall up because they wanted to create something to say thank you to Jürgen. They get a lot of fans going in there for, for drinks before the game. Um, also staying over there at the hotel. So they've, uh, yeah, commissioned us to create this, uh, we believed, thank you, Jürgen, Danke Jürgen mural and uh, it's been probably the most challenging mural that we've ever done and that's mainly down to the weather. Yeah, but also important to get right, you know, <laughs> because, you know, th that's the thing, if you, if in Liverpool, if people aren't happy with it, you'll know, um, you know, um, there's the famous story, isn't there, of Ringo going on uh, the Jonathan Ross show and, and he was asked, does he miss living in Liverpool and he said no and then the next day there was a topiary, apparently, of the Beatles. Uh, Ringo's head was missing from it. So you yeah. don't you don't want to get it wrong, Mark. No, there's always that pressure. And to be honest with you, it's the pressure that, that it's the pressure that gets to you, but it's also the pressure that really kicks you up the backside and, and makes you strive to that next level. So I'm always striving to make sure that our mural is the the best one we've done. Right. Once you've done it, as soon as you've done it, you go amazing. And then the next thing inside of me is like, how do we make the next one bigger and better? Um, I must say that the, the Robbie Fowler one's going to be tricky. <laughs> it is yeah. going to be tricky. I mean, obviously we've done this one here. This is a much smaller scale and it's a temporary one, but we do love this one. But um, yeah, in terms of doing something that's going to beat that, it's going to be a bit challenging, but we'll find a way. You see, I'd like to get down to um, the one at Kirkdale and just have a look at it myself. Um, I did email them, but uh, I've not had a reply yet from the hotel. Um, so I'll yeah. put you in contact, John, with the right people. So Marie's the, the hotel manager, um, and, uh, James who runs it actually went away. So originally we were doing this starting Sunday night and then complete it yes on Monday, but because of the weather and other yeah. things that went wrong with the scissor lift and stuff like that, uh, it didn't quite happen and he's gone away and he was gutted because he wanted to be there for this. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely introduce you, John. Yeah, I mean, trying to trying to work this morning up, up this end of the world would have been an impossibility. I mean, it's a, it was like watching a river flow just outside of my house. So it was, a, I don't know what it was like everywhere else, but it was incredible. But yeah, yeah I mean, I would say I think now Jürgen's going and we'd love to feature that one as well. So in the fanzine, so we will do, especially because next issue is going to be all about Jürgen um, yeah. or a fan tribute, if you, if you like. So... Yeah, I can uh, speak to you about getting that one, getting a real yeah, good it, 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 The Phoenix Hotel is our pretty much our base camp um, when, whenever we come down because that was one of oh, our right. first jobs that we've done with the, feet, with the Beatles on the side and they really do look after us. They've got some really nice rooms there and it's in such a great location because you're literally five minutes up the road from Anfield, less than, and, and sort of 10 minutes into the city centre. So yeah. uh, we absolutely love it as a base, really, when the whole team's up there. When we've done the Anfield... Uh, road, where the stand's being built on the Anfield Road in the park. I don't know if you remember it, but they had holdings across the whole yeah, of the yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. And uh, we got commissioned by the F Liverpool Football Club to to create some artwork on it. And what we done was I got 16 of our artists all at once and we all I, I gave them all a different player. And it was all strikers o over the last 20 years. And you had some of the older generation down one end, Kenny Dalglish, and Rush, all the way to Mane, uh, down at the current end and Mo Salah and people like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we had 16 of us plus some of the camera crew all staying over, taking over the hotel and, uh, they do look after us. Nice. 
it's great. I mean, I say it, it's an area now that's become, well, it's, as I say, it, it's taken street art, as you, you meant to call it, to another level, in my opinion. Um, but good luck on trying to beat the Robbie one. <laughs> Thank you. Where can we Where get more ideas? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, they'll have ideas. Where can we get uh, more information about more walls? Uh, well, we're obviously got Mule website. Walls, actually. Is the, well, M so, so I created the company as yeah. Mule Walls. So you play on the yeah. word mural, yes. as in a mural on a wall, whereas in Liverpool, a lot of people call it mural, which is fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, so mural and then a wall going on a wall. Yeah. And um, yeah. I call it Mule Walls. People yeah. struggle to say it and call it Mur Walls. I yeah. couldn't give a crap what people call it as long as they're talking about us. Um, you know, absolutely. That's all I want, really. Um, but mural walls is 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 quite a hard word to say really but it's m-u-r-w-a-l-l-s that's right and instagram is where we're, we're building up our following and that's at mural walls we've got a youtube channel we've got a twitter x uh channel as well we're on all the social media channels we've got a great team running all because if someone's but, interested yeah. in getting t-shirts and stuff would they get they get that through the website well yeah at the moment i mean as we do work with a lot of clubs uh that sell them through the club shops but uh with the liverpool stuff yeah they'll, they'll just watch this space in the next month or so there'll be probably an e-commerce platform through our channel or, or maybe some through some of the fan sites mm, well thanks for telling us all about it Mike, and thanks for all the work you've done just um, making Anfield, the region, making L4 so much part of the club, you know, it's just, of and the fan experience. It's just just amazing, just great. Uh, it's, it's a privilege, and, and it really is truly an honour. And to, to kind of be part of that Scouse family, the, the Liverpool Football Club family, it's really special. There's no other club like it. You know, I'm, I'm, I've, we've worked with a lot of clubs and we, we have great relationships with a lot of them. But working around Anfield when you've got people that are living there. There's not many clubs where you've got in the Premier League where you've got houses right on top of the stadium and, you know, you're painting a mural up and you've got people coming out chatting to you, bringing cups of tea and sandwiches. They look after you and we have uh, we definitely feel like we're part of the family and we're, we're appreciated and we appreciate them as well. Great. All right. Fantastic. Well, are, are we hearing rumours of the new, the new manager? We don't like to speculate, do we, John? But we are no. hearing... The, the Sporting Lisbon head coach, as well, this morning they were reporting it, it was a three-year deal, but it had been done verbally, but there's nothing nothing in writing yet. Do, does, that, does anybody know any more here? Not, not really. I think uh, the worst thing that happened when Jürgen said he was going to go, uh, apart from him going, was that the rumour channel uh, went into overdrive. You, you know, and I mean... Um, no, no disrespect there to Mark, but Sam Allardyce might have even thought about it because <laughs> he he was he, he's managed about every club in the country. I'm sure he's thought about it. Whether Liverpool <laughs> thought about him? Yeah, yeah, no, Liverpool didn't think about him, but you know he's he's that there's that many. Um, personally speaking, um, I don't know who's going to get the job, and the club will announce it soon enough. Yeah, I, I think it's already been decided. It would be um, nice if they announced it before the end of the season and then Jürgen could endorse the new manager and kind of hand it over. It would be a nice... There's a respect thing. thing, though. You've got to respect um, the club that the guy is currently with. Uh, you know, they're they're involved in a, a title race. Um, but what I would say is that um, it is a little bit sort of like... Um, in the shadows of the the great managers managerial names that's on on the continent at the moment, but Portuguese football is very very good. Uh, it's got a it's got its own disciplines, and a lot of players have come into the Premier League from Portugal, and and done very well. Wolves have got a few. Um, Liverpool have got uh, Diaz, who was playing in Portugal. Nunes, who was playing in Portugal, and Jota, who is Portuguese. So there's a lot of players out there, um, and he, he seem from what I've heard, he, he's got his own style of play that might that might actually fit the um, it might fit the the, the bill, you, you know, Tamford. Mm -hmm. It won't be won't be like Jurgen's. Nothing could be like Jurgen. I mean, God, you you know, it's he is as as people have said the reincarnation of Bill Shankly. and um, you, you won't you can't you can't you can't get another Jurgen Klopp. But whoever comes in has got um, 
it's got it's got something to live up to, and uh, there'll be pressure. So maybe it's best that they keep it under wraps until they they, they want to, to want to announce yeah. it. But at this stage, Ruben Amarin is, and I'm, sh- I'm I'm hoping that's how you say it, because if he does become the Liverpool manager, he'll be a household name by, you know, within a couple of weeks. And if I've said it wrong, then people will look at this in a couple of weeks' time, and I'll look like a complete idiot. I'll be like the I've still got audio of Tony Blackburn on the top forty announcing, and that was Duran Duran, because no one knew how to say Duran Duran back there, and that's just how it is. So I'm very, I'm nervous about saying his name, but as far as I know, it's Ruben Amarim. Can you imagine what Spurs fans, can you imagine what Spurs fans were like with Ange Poster de Coglu? I mean, yeah, I've only right. just been able to say it now. It's crazy. Well, I, still, I still call him Ange, because I, I, I've got a Celtic, a Celtic um, uh, following. I, I like Celtic. And, uh, you know, I was disappointed when he left. Yeah. I just called him Ange. It was, yeah, yeah, you know, um, Greek Australians, blimey. But <laughs> yes. my, my, my hope is my hope is that if this guy is um, is coming to Liverpool, that maybe in two years' time we can have Mark on and talk about the um, mural he's done for the manager that's won Liverpool, this trophy and that trophy. No, no yeah. pressure on him. I mean, that that's the thing, yeah. right? I mean, the yeah. amount of no, pressure. No pressure on him, no. <laughs> And, and that's always the worry, right? When you've got a new manager coming in, following on from the success of someone, you've got to look at Alex Ferguson at Man United. You know, they've never replaced Alex Ferguson. But then I would say that look at the team that Alex Ferguson left the next generation and it wasn't very good, right? He won the league with them, but it wasn't a very good squad. Whereas you look at what Jurgen's built and you'd have to be a pretty poor manager to not do something with this lot. There's a great, great team, great balance. So you'd like to think that someone that's half decent will have a good chance. Yeah. I think whoever comes in will know what the um, what the fans expect. And as I say, the thing about Jurgen Klopp is he transcends football. He, you, you know, it's like Muhammad Ali transcending boxing, and uh, he, he's, he's something else. So it's not going to be an easy act to follow. I mean, the thing is, the the, the one of the things about Klopp I watch is when he's on the touchline, I like to see what he's up to. Because you know, well, getting that booked itself, usually. That, that in itself is a show. It's yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's fantastic. I mean, uh, I know I know why he says he's tired. I can I can imagine why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I but mean, big responsibility more, because you know more, there'll be there'll certainly be pets named after Jurgen, and there'll be people with middle names of of Jurgen, and you know our dog's called Rafa because he's a Spanish <laughs> refuge. Uh, rescue. Uh, Julie actually said to me, I said, well, this, this Ruben Amarim has been linked with Liverpool. She says, well, that'd be a good name for a dog straight away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. You could only bring a manager in that's got a good name for a pet. That's, that's right. Yeah, that could be a good rule, actually. Is that on yeah. Liverpool's checklist? you think that's one of the things? <laughs> it should be. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely on the checklist. It's on Graham's anyway. <laughs> well, in fact, that, that brings me to this, which is uh, a book about Tommy Lawrence. You were at the book launch, weren't you, John? And it's written by Peter Kenny Jones. Well, there's a reason why his middle name is Kenny. Um, that's because he was christened, you know, his parents decided they wanted a, a reference to Dalgleish. But uh, you were at the book launch. It, how did that go, John? I was at one of them. I didn't get to the one at the church last week, unfortunately, okay. um, doing the fanzine. Um, and of course, there's a train strike that prevented you coming up. I was, um, I was due to go up, yeah. And uh, it, But, but um, it, it, Tommy Lawrence, to me, one of the... It was an individual. He's a great goalkeeper. Like um, a great mural. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look at this picture here. Of, I mean, his nickname was the Flying Pig. Look at that picture. I mean, wow. there's a mural right there. Shame it's not colour, but it could be in a mural. Love it. But, he, uh, <laughs> but uh, I said before, um, Tommy was a nice guy. I met him a couple of times, and uh, the last time was... Um, we were playing a night game and I was walking down the Anfield Road and all of a sudden he came out of where the players at that time parked the cars and he just went, how are you doing, mate? I said, oh, hello, and he started chatting to me as we walked along. I mean, I thought, I don't know if, how he remembered me, but he did. And he chatted away, you know, right until he got to the uh, the then, um, well, the players' entrance, but or former players' entrance, but anyway, where he went into the stadium. He had chatting away merrily about goalkeeping. Yeah. And that comes across in this, uh, and Peter Kenny Jones, he starts the book with the famous BBC interview, which if you haven't, everyone's seen it, but the one he's in, he's in Liverpool, 
and they're doing a, a vox pop. They're asking people, do they remember the uh, the Liverpool Everton game, the uh, the cup tie? The was it sixty? Well, I forget. It was in the sixties. You'll know, John. It was the, it was the Liverpool Everton cup tie, the one where they had the yeah. screens up at Anfield. And they're asking people to for memories of it, and they accidentally bumped into Tommy Lawrence. He says, "I played in it," and uh, just the way he was in that thirty second clip. His family say, you know, that's how he was. He was so humble and he was such a, just a nice yeah. guy. And him and Roger Hunt lived in the village of Culture uh, near Warrington. And it, it's a great book. I'm nearly finished. When I finished it, I'll do a review for the fanzine. So look out for that. But thanks to Peter Kenny Jones for sorting us out with that because it is. It's called uh, Sweeper Keeper because he was the world's first sweeper keeper. It says Sweeper Keeper, Tommy Lawrence, the story of Liverpool and Scotland's legendary flying pig. And the foreword is by Ian Callaghan. So, yeah, you want to check that out. It was launched, was it last week or the week before? It was last week, wasn't it, John? Yeah, over the last fortnight, yeah. It's yeah, still yeah. 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 All right, the Manchester United game. Are we going to talk about it? It's not the result we wanted. Could have been worse. It's not a lot really to say. I thought the reaction on social media, uh, we're all used to these things now. You you know, you win and everybody's, everybody in the team's the greatest um, since the last lot of legends. You know, but we didn't win. We, we drew. And, you know, there's not, there won't be many fans in that ground that went, I didn't go, but there wouldn't be many fans that went to Old Trafford last week. Uh, who can't remember the date times when we used to go there and expect to get beat. So that that's changed. Um, but we still haven't got a great record there. Jürgen's uh, won there in the league. He's won there in a couple of times in the league. He's won there uh, um, in a Europe. Well, I didn't win in, in a European game. got a draw there. But, um, yeah, it wasn't the right result. But, it, man, you, you know, teams are playing for something. Manchester United and West Ham, they're playing for trying to get into Europe. Uh, West Ham are still in the UEFA uh, Europa Cup. Um, teams are wanting to stay up in the league. You, you know, we play Sheffield United and I listened to LFC TV the, the day, two days before, and they'd basically written off, you know, it was a walkover, it was, you, you know, duck shoot. And we're going to improve our goal difference. Um, that didn't happen. These teams are fighting for their lives or they're fighting to get into Europe. Um, you know, very few teams now in the Premier League, that's not, there's only a few teams in the, what you call comfortably in mid-table and ready to get the deck chairs out. So I wasn't surprised that we only got a draw because I thought Manchester United, well, they're not, they weren't going to stand there and let us walk all over them. But we miss chances. We, 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 you, but there's no point for some people coming on social media and criticising them. Um, I, I would say to anybody that did at the start of the season, did you expect Liverpool to still be in contention for? Uh, well, we've already won one trophy, but uh, uh, further two trophies come mid-April, and the answer would have to be no. Mm. Mark, but what we, did you think of the game? Because it was—I thought it was a great game. I, I thought it was a great game of football, first and foremost. I think. You know, every game for the teams challenging at the top now, uh, Manchester City, Liverpool and Arsenal, every single game is important. And every team you're playing against, that's the beauty of the Premier League. You play Sheffield United, yes, on paper, you should win it and walk it, but it's never as straightforward with, as that. And that's the beauty of it. And when you play a Man United, Man United have got that added incentive. Yes, they're trying to push to get into Europe, but at the same time, they don't want to see Liverpool win the league. And they're going to do everything they can against that. And, you know, they're not a great Man United side, but they've got a few great players. I mean, Maynou in the middle, what a player he is. I think he's absolutely fantastic. Um, but what I would say is that when Liverpool were 2-1 down, I don't know how Liverpool fans feel, but I'm watching the game and I never believed Liverpool were going to lose that game. I never believed it. Even with a few minutes to go, I would have felt that they're going to nick and equalise that. I, I thought that they were going to have a good chance to win it. Um, but I, I always believed that they were going to get back into that game. Did he pick the right team, John? Um, well, in my view, I'd, I'd have gone for Harvey Elliott, but I'm an Harvey Elliott fan. Um, I'd like to see Curtis Jones, but we, I think we need a bit more pace in, in certain parts of the pitch. Um, but I'm not going to try and tell Jürgen his job. <laughs> you, you know, he, he picked the side. Um, so at the end of the day, we did not lose. Um, we've got to now go on a roll. I honestly believe if we win the next seven games, then we will win the league. Okay. That's yeah. how I feel. Okay. I agree right. with that. 
The only real downside, because it was a great spectacle of football, was the tragedy chanting. Um, fair play to BBC Five Live just before the kickoff. They did play the part of the press conference from Jürgen, where Jürgen basically laid it out and said, look, these are two of the biggest teams in the world, two of the biggest football clubs in the world. You know, have a bit of class. And and he's right. And we had the same chance again. We had the murderous chance. And even sign on, you know, is, is that really... Is that really about football? You know, there's no reference to it on Sky Sports, even though you could hear it on the TV. Uh, it did sound as well at points like they'd maybe dipped the the crowd noise and it sounded to me like they'd added like a generic crowd into that. I, I could be completely wrong, but I hope they're, they aren't censoring it. But then, of course, I suppose it's a difficult con- a decision. They don't want to broadcast it. But I, I, it's sad because I think what fans of any club need to realise the ones who do this it's because football fans behaved in that way for a number of years they got a reputation and it was having that reputation of football fans being like that is why Hillsborough was allowed to happen and the state funded cover up of it was allowed to go on and you said on this show a few weeks ago John that the Hillsborough situation and the way the families were treated and the search for justice which still isn't there no one's been held responsible it wouldn't have been like that if the disaster had happened at Twickenham because rugby fans don't have that reputation and whereas other fans might think that they're picking on Liverpool fans and other, they're just making all fans of every club look bad and making them vulnerable to prejudice from outside and from the establishment and higher echelons in society and the people in control and the people who control the power. So I think it's important that football fans realise that and this tragedy chant, and it has to end because it's bad for all, not just Liverpool, it's bad for all clubs. Anyway. I agree with you, Um, but uh, it won't end until something's done about it. Not just Liverpool, uh, but you you know, racist, homophobic chanting that still happens um, until the, until the football leagues, the Premier League, uh, do something about it. Seriously, do something about it. It won't yeah. stop. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what Mark thinks as a as a West Ham fan. West Ham think... used to have a bad reputation, didn't they, with the Intercity firm and things like that back in the the bad old days, and that couldn't think... have done the the, the region of the, of. Uh, where where West Ham is in in a you know working class area of London it couldn't have done the area any good at all. Yeah, I think the the thing I would say is that on a positive note that it's a minority. Yes, I would say that. Now that's a and really it is being thing. talked about in mainstream media now, which it wasn't for years too. Yeah. That's another that, positive. So, so I, I think that's a positive, um, but on a negative, it's still it's really sad to think that these things do still go on. But at the end of the day, we're in a world where. You know, human beings, uh, everyone's different. Everyone's got different thoughts on how we should behave and shouldn't behave. Um, And uh, it's just sad that some of these things go on and people say things to be hurtful and spiteful to other people. And these are probably the same people. Like I I do find football fascinating in the sense that you put these fans together in a stadium and, you know, you put... At West Ham, you get West Ham fans and you get, I don't know, Tottenham fans next to them and the hatred between people, the vile abuse and everything like that. And they'll go and sit in the pub t- tomorrow and, and at work chatting about things and being the best of friends. But that's what football does to you. It brings out this anger and tribalism within you that you've got to protect it. Um, and as I said, I do think that on a positive, it, it's got a lot better. But uh, on a negative, it, it's still nowhere near what it needs to be. And there's some horrible things that are being said and it shouldn't be there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's look forward then, John. Thursday night, Atalanta. Yeah, another big game, um, <clears throat> another must-win game. Get some goals, get five or six goals to make the second leg easier. <laughs> that'd be that'd be the dream, uh, but it won't be like that. Atalanta is a, a good side. They're, they're playing very well in Italy, um, and the Italian football is improving a little bit. So it's not going to be it's not going to be a cakewalk or, or anything like that. But hopefully we'll win. Hopefully we can get through it, and uh, then. Um, well, we've we've got uh, a semi final, and hopefully that date in Dublin. Yeah, which I'm. It must be if we get to that final, it will be the closest Liverpool have appeared in a European final. The closest location to Liverpool. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's closer than London. Yeah. Yeah, 
it may even be the closest a European final has ever been played to Liverpool. I know they did a UEFA Cup final once at Villa Park. I don't know what the distance between Liverpool and Birmingham and Liverpool and Dublin is. So I don't know. But certainly for Liverpool's much, involvement in it. Yeah. Yeah. Liverpool's involvement in it would be, be the closest. So it'll be almost like playing at home. Don't but, but, Atlanta could be it could be a little bit tricky. I've, I, I'm pretty confident that Liverpool will fly past it, but it's one of them teams where I know John. You said they're doing all right. I'm not too sure how they're doing, to be honest with you. But uh, I, I know they've got um, an ex West Ham striker, Skamaka, that we signed for a lot of money. Um, came with high expectations, and to be fair, in glimpses he looked absolutely incredible. But the way that Moyes plays, he just doesn't allow players like him. And I don't know if you remember Sebastian Haller as well, who who was incredible for, for um, uh, Ajax and, and Dortmund uh, since, but West Ham just couldn't do it under the formation that we play it. But Skamaka is there. I don't know. I think he's on a bit of a dry run at the moment, but he is a talent. And he's an Italian international playing for them, but I just don't hear much about Atlanta. Well, I think at this moment in time, the sixth. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, you, you know, the... It, the any team that reaches the quarterfinals of a, any any cup, be it the League Cup, the even the Papa John Cup that's no longer there, it's a Bristol Street, Street Motors, isn't it? If you're in the semi-final, you start thinking of the final. Mm. And um, it, no matter what club you are, and this is going to be a big, big game. And I think the atmosphere will be pretty good. It's not been always, always brilliant um, in the last couple of years uh, at Anfield for uh, the European games. But I think now, following on from what what it's been like since Jürgen made his announcement, I think it's going to be a pretty electric night. Yeah. All right, then. Unfortunately, there is a night that's not going to happen, John. That's the night at the church, for which we were tentatively uh, booking for May the 4th, weren't we? Yeah. The last appreciation. Unfortunately, circumstances uh, beyond my control anyway, um, that so made it made it not happen. Um, I wanted it to happen. I'd got, I'd even got the posters printed, um, and they're still in the box behind me. But uh, no, there were too many complications. Um, no point in going into it. But we're still going to schedule this. It's going to be a pre-season event now. And, okay. Uh, we'll so the event will happen. It just won't happen in May. That's it. No, it won't happen in May. No. Okay. But the the raffle evil. will go ahead. Is that right? The raffle yeah, will go that's ahead. The plan. I've got to. I've got to get that on the go. Uh, well, the the event will happen. The raffle will happen, and the auctions will happen. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's the plan. Okay. Issue three hundred two of the fanzine will be out Thursday, and will be on sale at the Atalanta game and Sunday. Crystal Palace. Will it be out for that? Oh, definitely. Well, of course it will. Yeah. yeah, if it's out on the Thursday, because it'll be out on the yeah, Sunday. I'm sure. I was looking at the camera. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you if you you can subscribe, read all over the land dot com. There's the um, thing right up there. It gives you the the website address. You can there's, there's articles on there as well on the website. But you can subscribe and get the fanzine posted to you, so it'll come through your door. So you uh, in case you're not at Anfield and you can't you can't hear John shouting read all over the land. Liverpool fanzine only two pound. Part of the sound of Anfield for twenty nine years. Um, John, it's always it's always a pleasure to to talk to you on this and to do this with you. And uh, Mark, thank you so much for telling us about Muir Walls and uh, the new Robbie Fowler mural, which is not to be missed, and the the Jurgen Klopp one, Klopp one. And hey, continued success and thanks for coming on. It's been great talking to you. Thanks so much for having me, Graham. It's been a pleasure. And and uh, John, thanks for thanks for having me on as well. It's great to meet you. And uh, now we're in touch. I'm sure we'll be speaking regularly. I Fantastic. hope so. And and as I say, um, what what you've done, I'll go again and say the Fowler one. It it, it fills me with pride. And uh, yeah, you, you know, any time if I've ever met Robbie Fowler, it's only because he's brushed past me. But um, no, it, it's something else. And uh, I know that on uh, Thursday night, people will be targeting that area of the uh, of Anfield Road to to look at the the, the mural and. Then they'll be off down to the um, Phoenix to have a look at Jurgen. I just um, realised that's the that's, this is the first home match, right? Since Robbie's been yeah, up, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going to be brilliant. And thank, thank you for what you've done. Sure, and had thank a great you. crowd in front of it, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the reaction from all the fans going down there. It'd be fantastic. Yeah, and thank you for all you've done, and thank you for what you've told us tonight. It's opened my eyes. Believe you and me, it really has.
Fantastic. I appreciate that, especially from you, John, the amount of amazing work that you've been doing with that fanzine for years. That's that's incredible. That's an achievement. And uh, if if we get uh, any anything close to what you've achieved, then we'll be very proud people. Thanks a lot, everybody. Till next time, as always, remember, you'll never walk alone. Thank you.